Okay, video's going and audio's going. Hi, Brent. Hi. This episode of the Poundcast is brought to you by hey. Louisville. What? Louisville. Say what? Just go ahead now. Okay. Louisville Vegan Jerky. Oh. Louisville Vegan Jerky is 100% fake meat. Fake jerky. Shut the fuck up. Wait, no, don't. I, that was a wrong drop. Oh, okay, okay. I'll keep going. Keep going because I love Louisville vegan jerky, as you know, and I go to Louisville vegan foods all the time for 20% off using the code word poundcast. But oh, what were yeah. you saying? Well, I was going to say that you can go to louisvillevegan.foods.com uh -huh. and you can get 20% off by using the code word poundcast. 20% off. That's a lot of percentage, Brent. That's under 50 bucks. Wait. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Oh, that's 20% off. That's under 50 bucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> if you're just buying yeah! one bag, that's under yeah! 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, no, it's going to be. It's, you guys know them. You love them. It's hand bagged in the USA. Hand bagged in the USA. And it's when you buy a bag, here's the cool thing. You can wait nine months to eat it because that's the shelf life nine i bet you can wait even longer to you be can honest. have one baby two babies three babies we're talking if you have you sure know please. twins twins like your your own brothers brent that's right that's right uh that's that's the same amount of time imagine that An wow, incubation period of you know of, of nine months and Hold the on, you're telling me i can get two that's or three right. kids out of this yeah what a deal what a deal yes Yes. I wonder if the jerky boys like Louisville <laughs> vegans. You know what I mean? What if they're like, that's why they're called the jerky boys. They just like eating jerky all day. Well, I mean, they could also Thank just you. like regular beef jerky, you know, be called the jerky boys. But what if they were called the Louisville vegan jerky boys? Oh, that's a prank show. We got to start. That sounds Louisville vegan. Let's pitch that to them. <laughs> and this is our pitch. LouisvilleVeganFoods.com. If you're listening. Louisville Vegan well, Jerky Boys. Me and Brent. Get the Jerky Boys involved. We'll talk hey, about the Jerky Boys. Be, before we get started with our, uh, with our guest here, he's already in our little chat. He's in the Hi. Mix. Ben, Levin. Have you ever... Hello. Do you like vegan jerky or... Yeah, I'm vegan as fuck and I love vegan jerky. <laughs> I can't wait to try this new one I haven't had yet called Louisville Vegan Jerky brought to you by the Poundcast. That's a, a true wait. story? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Do you think that you really are going to try Louisville vegan jerky after this episode? Well, I, you know, I wasn't sure if I was going to buy anything anymore, but then I heard about the twenty percent off deal with you guys using code Poundcast or the Poundcast. Is it Poundcast? Just Poundcast. The, yeah. Just Poundcast. That's so easy. That saves me time now, and yeah, I'll definitely be buying it for twenty percent off, less than fifty dollars. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Ben. You know what? Let's bring Ben on the show, but first. Uh, uh, just a couple other we things. We should probably mention one other thing or two. Go ahead. Okay, and look. If you want to see video of the show, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash the poundcast. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in doing video instead. And uh, also, if you would like extended, extended episodes that are up a, a half an hour to even up to an hour or sometimes even more longer episodes. You can go to patreon.com slash poundcast. That's right. For as low as $2 a month. No one's doing $2 a month on their Patreon. Right. Except That's the unique. poundcast because we're coming in. We, we believe in savings and uh, value. I mean, $2, $2 a cents? month? It's 50 cents for each bonus episode. That's nothing. $2 a month. That's under 50 bucks. <laughs> That's right. That's under 50 bucks. <laughs> and as always, I got to mention, if you, I have some merch at uh, dougpound.bigcartel.com. I've got the Ask to Dad shirts. Oh, yeah. Back in stock. I also got pound, uh, pound cast shirts. There's a few left. I got socks. And I also have my own Patreon, patreon.com slash dougpound. And every day, I do content every single day. You're going to have access to the squirrel report. <laughs> and let's now let's get on with the show let's get on with the show hit it here's our um 
here's a remix of our theme song brought to you by Logan Stolly. Hope Logan I pronounced his name right. Logan Stiley. Stiley. He should be called Stiley. And Pinch he is Logan one of our pa- pa- if you're another bonus, another perk of the Patreon is the, you get the stems to the theme song and you get to make your own remix. Isn't that fun? All right, let's roll the tape. Welcome to the pound cast. Welcome to the pound cast. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the pound cast. Welcome to the pound cast. Welcome to the welcome to the pound cast. Pound cast. All right. And now, without further ado, I pinch loaf styly. <laughs> Let's bring on our <laughs> guest for today, Ben Levin. Doctor Ben. Levin. Doctor Ben Levin. That's right. <laughs> I'm a fake doctor on the internet. Yeah. Hey, look, that's perfect, yeah. man. We do, we do fake meat, fake fake beef jerky. Yeah. We got fake doctor. Yeah, perfect. It's a lot a lot easier that way. So That's I just cool. met Ben probably last week on uh, Instagram. You sent um, a cool kind of like you, you worked office hours into one of your videos. And I was like, wow, this is really cool, kind of fun and well done. <laughs> and then I showed it to uh, Tim and uh, the office hours crew. And they said, this is great. Let's bring him on the show. And then you were on office hours last week. Yeah, my mind is still blown. You only had a little segment on there, but I thought, let's get a real in-depth. Let's not just get a segment. Let's get the whole package. Let's get the whole package. I mean, that's, this is a a huge package we're talking about. And like, I just can't believe I'm on this show because I love this show. I love your, your, all your work. And uh, so getting an extensive package with y'all is like, (laughs) I don't know, it's like Hanukkah. Uh, times 10 80 Hanukkah it's Hanukkah times 10 yeah 80. so yeah 80 yeah that's yeah. cool <laughs> that's cool that's yeah that's 80. awesome what is it every what does that mean is it every eight years or something kind of it's, it's 80 eight nights. nights of Hanukkah it's eight oh nights. okay got it <laughs> yeah it's cool I I've been working on a lot of Hanukkah material and uh, that's the only one that was good enough for the pod so for those who don't know ben has a cool youtube channel what is it can you just uh what is the how do we how do they find it youtube.com slash ben levin yeah that's right and the the uh channel focuses on getting people to feel like encouraged and excited to make music and be creative and ideally like they'd watch a youtube video and then they'd close youtube immediately and go make something that's kind of my goal and and understand theory a bit yeah that's true yeah like for so i've been doing it since 2010 and the first like six or seven years of that was very like practical like i want to teach people the music school stuff that i learned when i went to school and then recently it's changed a lot to be much more focused on like um what i think youtube is stronger for which is uh like individual very like artistic kind of abstract uh general like let's get inspired things that are just kind of fun to watch but not necessarily like set up like 10 part courses because i feel like people have sort of stopped i think the algorithm has stopped serving like 10 part series i series is out and and also i'm just like kind of tired of making those 10 part series kind of thing. So yeah, I focus on like little shows. Each one's like a little show each day, each episode, like a all in one. But, but it's, it's really, so you, uh, would you say that the channel still, you still learn a lot from the show, from your channel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, but you say that maybe you're a little more, if it was edutainment, the, mm-hmm. it's harder on the entertainment now more than it is on the edu as it was in the past. Yeah. Exactly. It's more like, um, here are really exciting things that are not very hard to do. And here's more or less how I do them. So go for it. Uh, rather mm-hmm. than like, here is a, you know, 
um, really like detailed breakdown of, you know, modal interchange or whatever. And I, I've made those videos also. So it's like, I feel like, you know, that's there for, mm -hmm. if people want, but yeah, now it's all about um, like, did you know you could do this? Here's way too much effort, way too many hours of me doing that thing. And then maybe people be like, oh, wow, like a little stupid idea can have a lot of potential. Like for instance, you know, that video that Doug was referring to is, is really focused around just the idea of using a noise gate, which is a very common music production tool that controls when things make a sound and when they don't make a sound. And rather than it being like, you have to click a mute button to say something should be quiet or click a solo button to make something play, it uses other things to tell audio tracks whether they should play or not. So basically you can take another sound and use that sound to make another sound uh, on mute. So in the case of the video that Doug was saying, I was using a joke I wrote to make other sounds unmute, which meant that anytime I was telling the joke, you were hearing like a whole symphony of sounds. But when I was like in between words, like when I pause in my speaking, everything would suddenly, suddenly shut off. And then I spent way too much time and put way too much work into making a bunch of musical examples of that technique. But then it gets people thinking like, oh, I can do a lot with a little. And that's another big focus of my channel is getting people to feel like they can work within limitations and make a lot from what they have. Kind of like with Two Wet Crew, for instance, how, you know, that show has a lot of like amazing editing kung fu and amazing like super creative storytelling happening with the way perspective changes and all that. But you do feel like if you only had those kinds of sick ideas, you could make that show. Like it doesn't look, it doesn't look like inaccessible. It looks very um, accessible to a person to make a thing like that, but you see that the value is in the ideas. So I really like things like that. It helps people with, you know, all the tools we have now to like stop thinking, oh, I need to buy a fancier camera. I need to get like, you know, lav mic set up and a lighting crew and everything. It makes them think, I want to express my ideas now within whatever limitations. That's kind of my jam. I love that. Yeah. I mean, that was the whole point of Two Wet Crew was to be like, let's use this. We didn't even, we had a, uh, let me see if I have it here. Can't find my camera, but I, we use just like um, a point and shoot camera uh, that was waterproof. Um, and then the sound on it was crappy because it was waterproof. So it was like in this kind of like sealed <laughs> case. Um, but anyway, I don't know where I was. I don't know. I was just reiterating what you just said. But Well, I think that's like a perfect example of the kind of thing I'd make a whole video about, which is that, you know, the waterproof camera gives you this special power to go to the beach and film all kinds of shots of like Jay Weingarten popping out of the water and catching a phone. Suddenly Mikey's underwater drowning because he ate some nasty strawberries. And like you can do these shots that you couldn't do without the underwater camera. But then it has all this the audio limitations. Well, how do you deal with a thing like that? Oh, well, you overdub all the audio and, and then you can write your script around what it, like what are the implications of overdubbed audio? What are the implications of like the, the theme of the water? Like what does that let you do? Um, and you know, like the, the overdub audio is like a style thing that's like, I, I think it points, with that show to like this deep underlying feeling that maybe the whole thing is happening while Doug's drowning. Like maybe this whole thing is like a death experience. You and get like it, that, man. You get yeah, it. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I feel like, Oh man, I'm all about pound house to what crew. Like I, I, I really uh, look at those as like great internet art. And, and like I do, I take like internet art very seriously because like social media and all that is sort of like a giant psychological wound that needs to be decorated by nice art in order for it to not like tear us to the ground and like yeah i mean i can go on uh, i'd like to if you don't mind i love everything <laughs> you're saying i mean that's i never heard anyone call social media a psychological wound but like totally like yeah I, I, I mean personally i just try to put like um videos and fun stuff on there you know mm -hmm. because that's you can't get yeah i could you can get into the doom scrolling thing where you're like 
seeing a lot of stuff that kind of like maybe is important news and stuff, but it, after a while it kind of makes you depressed or something and causes yeah. a psychological wound. Yeah, I'm right. kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm really right. contemplating, I'm really thinking about that phrase, psychological wound with regards to social media. It's an it is major, major. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if there's some connection to Lacanian theory of like suture and stuff like that w with, with regards to that, I wonder, you know? Like people create these sort of filtered versions of themselves on social media. And then that in turn sort of maybe calls attention to other people's shortcomings, which are sort of, so like in their suturing of their life or filtered life or whatever, they are calling attention to other people's insecurities, wounds and so forth. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. That's in, that inspiring seems inspiring some spot spots on. here. Yeah, oh, you because, think so? What I'm saying, okay. So yeah, what Ben, what no. Ben is doing, and what Two Wet Crew tries to do, and what the Poundcast tries to do, and etc., is to put a bandaid on these wounds, or? Well, the way I see it is, um, <laughs> I'm just anyone kidding. who's anyone uh, <laughs> open the wound, you open the wound even more, like <laughs> yeah. aside, you know? Yeah, uh, you make that wound into a gift. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, I mean, I th I think it's like there there is um, a lot of algorithm chasing that goes on in making stuff for the internet, and there's a lot of um, you know like like the, the algorithm is fundamentally you know powered by people, but then it becomes sort of a a monster version of whatever like fed into it. For instance, you know for a while like short attention span videos were rewarded where like the shorter the video and the snappier the video like the more people would share it and then shares would be valued a lot so the idea of people sitting around sharing their favorite videos in a party setting where shorter videos are less of a strain on your friends and also like you can get through them faster that was bec like that the phenomenon of people sharing that stuff on youtube at least in theory was part of what made it so that YouTube was like, well, this is what we'll value in like what we what we support as a platform is shorter videos. But now it's changed where it values uh, how long people watch and how much people click on your titles and thumbnails. So your title and thumbnail has to be really catchy, but then it can't be deceptive enough that once people click on it, they leave. So then you end up because like how long they watch matters. Like now they're rewarding 10 minute, 20 minute longer, longer videos. So anyway, people who make stuff try to like figure this out and try to make their stuff reflect the algorithm, but then they lose a bit of their humanity because instead of being the thing that tells the algorithm where to go, they start to try to uh, become more and more empathetic to something that is not understood by any human that well and is, and is uh, perpetuates itself in this uh, kind of freakish way. And so when you make something like Duet Crew or like what I'm doing that is kind of different, it's something kind of different, <laughs> uh, you end up with, uh, I think uh, you're helping people sort of um, imagine. And, uh, and, then it, and then if you can get people to really want imaginative content, that'll actually eventually change the algorithm. Um, well, that's just like you, my theory at least. What you're kind of talking about to me is, a pro big problem with um, TV networks and stuff is that they don't sometimes realize and most of the time realize that they try to uh, they try to appeal to what they think people's sensibilities are instead of trying to help inspire a new sensibility or something like that you know so there's always this this idea of you know we need to do this you know people are, audiences are not going to like this unless they do this rather than trying to uh, you know, try to become a, uh, try to establish a new taste or a new sensibility or something like that. But and something more, something better for yeah. the mind. And, uh, you know, like not lowest common denominators kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I noticed this, this kind of idea when you go to like, I go on a lot of like road trips. Um, recently I've gone on a lot of, and, um, if you stop at like a gas station 
off the highway. And I don't know, I just like realized I went into like a rest stop gas station and I was like looking around at all the food and stuff, like everything they have there, there's like not us, there's like 1% of the things in there are like healthy. <laughs> you know, it's all just like candy bars and donuts and like really stuff that like appeals to like it's just un you know what i mean it's it, it yeah, appeals it to like fixed. your worst like uh impulse like i want that candy you know yeah and it's brightly colored and because like that's what people will will want i guess that's what will sell but like i don't know so then it kind of perpetuates itself and then next thing you know you're in the store and every single thing in here is like bad for you yeah because they're just like giving you what is bad for you because that's your your base instinct is to say I want to eat a candy bar, which are delicious, but then they just mm -hmm. only have that. And there, there's no Louisville so vegan broccoli. jerky yet. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. And then, well, then no broccoli bars. We, I mean, there we, could be, get, uh, yeah, sorry. Well, no, it's like, if, if you're, if you're really creative, you make people, um, you can appeal to that base need, but also give them something substantive. Like uh, if you, for instance, um, I guess like, you know, an example would be to have similar, uh, art work as like a kid cereal, like Fruit Loops or something that's really brightly colored and have there be like sweet elements, but like, you know, it's really what you're giving is like people a trail mix as opposed to something that's completely sugar. Like your product is maybe has like nuts and protein in it or something. And, but if you can get people to think of like, trail mix is like a like like if, if you can make a healthy trail mix that people actually think of as like a fast quick snack that like get some you know the sugar pump or buzz then you know that that's like a interesting thing to try with with like internet content like like for instance jump cuts jump cuts were initially designed to uh be able to make it so you can make videos faster and also like hyper um specifically make the dialogue keep people's attention and get rid of all the ums and pauses but like jump cuts can be re really artistic and really hilarious and also can like be great for teaching and education so like integrating a bunch of jump cuts into youtube now is just normal in fact one of the best things that ever happened for youtube was jump cuts becoming normal because then like all these people who had less script ability or less like were not as good at speaking English, like maybe it was their second language, can start like actually making, you know, educational stuff or like hilarious stuff or whatever they're doing. Um, and it wasn't just like a tactic used so that, you know, like people could talk about, um, I don't really know what, I don't want to like, I don't, I don't want to pretend I've watched enough of vloggers to actually do an impression of one, but I'm thinking of like some of the early, you know, vlogs that were very much like um, vapid. I don't know what else to, to say about them without like stereotyping like a whole genre. Uh, you know, this reminds me of um, a movie that is a pretty classic movie that I saw not too long ago. And it's, it's kind of a, it's a downer kind of movie and it's like i i, I don't know it's not I don't, I don't know anyway but that's besides the point but it's it's large ventures uh breaking the waves right and um what's something that i really did really appreciate about the movie is that there are scenes with jump cuts in it uh, in them and it, it, it's interesting that he just didn't he doesn't care like uh, I think there's like a maybe like filmmaking etiquette that uh, this idea that for something to look seamless, it can't have jump cuts. You know, you have to cut away to something and so that it looks perfect or whatever, or looks real or something like that. But there's these performances and he'll just stay on the person and they'll, you know, deliver their lines or whatever. And then there'll be a jump cut in the middle of it and it'll be another part of their dialogue. And I thought that was really cool because it's like it didn't matter to that. It, as long, it, what was cool is that this the 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 feeling still got across, the dialogue got across. I mean, I imagine that he was he thought, 
well, I really like this part of the performance. And then I, I also like this part of the performance. I, I don't need to cut away to it. It, it was almost like calling mm. attention to that, that there's an artificial or, or an artificial quality of having to cut away to something so that this looks like one continuous thing. Whereas mm. here, I'm just going to show you the part, the parts of the performances that I, I, I liked or I thought was important. And here it is. I thought that was kind of cool to sort of not be so concerned with it being con yeah. seamless and just having it be something that ha still has meaning, even though it's uh, kind of disjointed in the presentation or whatever. Uh, do anyway, you think, something like that. Yeah. Do you think uh, like the average viewers even th like think about the cuts and like even think of it that way or notice it? Maybe not, but you know, I mean, I, I think it's probably jump cuts are less accepted in film in in narrative filmmaking than mm -hmm. um you know video blogs or whatever you know but mm -hmm. yeah um I, I remember seeing a woody allen movie and there was like a scene where there was like it was just like that there was some, you know some dialogue between some characters and there was like jump cuts and i remember thinking like that's cool that he just did that you know he's breaking the rules of filmmaking which i went to film school and it's like jump cuts are not allowed yeah and breaking the 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 wall with a 180 degree rule is not allowed I, mm. I like when 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 those rules get broken and i i actually saw um beach bum last yeah, week I, you know that I movie saw that. i saw i saw mm -hmm. i actually kind of strangely went to the premiere did you like it uh well i wasn't I, you know it wasn't maybe I mean, no, you know, it wasn't. Okay, really whatever. I mean, I know you don't give your opinion, but I like Martin um, Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. I, I, I like some. I like some things about it. I like the editing of it because that's another movie where the edit. It was like all just kind of like jump cuts, and the camera is like just roaming around, and he'd be talking here, but then you're like seeing his mouth not moving. You know what I mean? And then they kind of cuts to the shot of him talking. It was cool, mm -hmm. like. I like when people mess with, with the format and yeah. also the, this one, <laughs> uh, I might've mentioned this before, but I saw this movie a long time ago called in our garden or trailer town. There's a two movies by this guy, Giuseppe Andrews, and he gets his actors that are not actors. They're like these people living in a trailer park and he, he writes a script and he, he kind of tells them what to say and then they say it, but they're they're when they're talking, it's like, they can only say like one or two words at a time and he like cuts it together. Mm. And I, there's something about that where that was like really fun and refreshing to watch because just totally breaking the rules of, I don't know. We're going down a jump cut. Wormhole right. here. Well, no, but I, 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 like I, that, I myself get caught up in that sometimes. And you know, if, Oh, this needs to look, perfect and we need a cutaway or something so what, what can we cut to so I that know, this looks too. perfect and i'm like thinking maybe i shouldn't worry about that as much and just i think you know the, the performance i want to portray or give or whatever it, it doesn't need to be so neatly i don't know that was kind of something inspiring about breaking the waves is that you can just you just just cut just cut it doesn't matter you know actually like that was the kind of the point of doing the basketball videos that we're releasing <laughs> these oh, yeah, few weeks great. is it, oh, like my idea to shoot more. it well my what was that sorry i just thought I, did, I was referring to the two that are out already i didn't realize you had more that's awesome oh there's a third one that's like we i kind of just finished it we were we're we're gonna release it in the next day or two but the idea with when i when i had the idea to make that was like just shoot a bunch of random stuff and make it cut together and who cares about like a narrative it's just like a just stuff that's kind of like happening like little lines yeah. and like moments well it kind of got inspired from the the tour video i feel like yeah we were just doing these random things to just promote pick a this theme. tour and we thought we should just do more like videos like this where we're just saying you know just randomly shooting things but with maybe some kind of common theme or something like that you know? it does make it harder to edit though because when you have a storyline and a narrative you can you know what comes next mm. this is like this can go like in a million ways but um i i thought about um i was just like thinking about pound house a lot uh like recently because i it's kind of to me it's about a person who 
doesn't have very much to lose, realizing he has a whole lot more to lose than he thought as he loses his agency. And like, basically like, you know, Brent's character takes away like everything he had by just making it so he can't even think for himself or like feel like a real person. He's just like this, he's on a leash and he doesn't even know who the owner is and how he became a dog basically. And like, that's kind of a, a shared experience right now for a lot of people where they're realizing like they lost a lot more than they knew they had. And then also, you know, there's instances where we realize what we have before we lost it from this that are positive too. But like, yeah, I, w I wonder like if, um, if there's another pound house in this, like these limitations that you have or something, just, just putting that out there, like given, well, just given, you know, we predicted the, the future with pound house. We predicted the current state of events. That's sort of, that was <laughs> no. Um, well, that, Ben, you know what? You really get it, man. Hell yeah. You get uh, it. Hey, I, I was like, Ben's the, basically when, when saying you... that what we do is we're, we, what we're doing is really valuable to humanity. This is what he's I saying. Agree. Uh, yeah, that is exactly what I'm saying. I absolutely. And, and that's like, I, you know, I, I, I use a lot of emojis. I love them, but I don't necessarily use as many as I did with Doug on Instagram. I'm just so pumped to even be talking to you guys and like, uh, just, yeah, being on office hours is I'm still buzzing over that. Like, um, Wait, well, you I, know, I feel, yeah, yeah. You know what, you know what I think is cool. And it's got, it's a little disturbing is you, 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 you told me that you, you're, uh, you like my editing and you were inspired by my editing. And then I look at your videos and you're going like way beyond anything I've ever done with like the technical aspect of it. There's like three, there's all kinds of 3d animations. I don't, I've never yeah. gotten into like how to animate, how to like do 3d animations and stuff. So did you just teach yourself? Well, we should probably like go back and find out your backstory a little bit. So sure. where do you live? I live in Boston. Um, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. And then I went there for Berkeley College of Music, just like Vic Berger. And, oh. uh, and Eric Andre. And Eric Andre, yep. And, and Brent, you went to the other Berkeley, right? That's right, that's right. So, so we're Berkeley bro. <laughs> yeah, so and I- uh, I'm an Elizabeth Berkeley fan, so I kind of fit in. <laughs> so. There you go. Yeah, and so I mean, I I, I was there uh, and stayed in Boston because I have a band called Bent Knee and we tour about a third of the year normally. The rest of the time I do YouTube and my own stuff. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I was just doing a lot of Bent Knee and a lot of YouTube. And then this year it's all YouTube, baby. Is and, Bent Knee uh, kind of like a Game of Thrones kind of um, thing? Well, it's pre-Game of Thrones, but I like that idea of it um like if the name i mean i'd rather people listen to the music before they like find out what the name's from because the name's so cheesy but basically we're six people who write collectively and we're like really a democratic band but it was started by me and the singer initially and so i'm ben and she's courtney and when you put ben and courtney together you get ben me <laughs> but I'm, and that's the unfortunate like you have to pick a name right and and I, a lot I, of when time, you said bent knee i thought that it was a reference to your name being ben well, no i was kid i was uncommon. obviously joking about the it just brought to mind the bend the knee on the on game yeah, of Thrones, but totally yeah that, that's like one of the google alerts we and, and like you know, you guys are pun masters, so it doesn't surprise me too much that you saw that like right away. It's basically a pun. But well, um, coming up with a band name is the hardest part yeah. of being in a band, pretty much. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I started it's two bands. I started two bands recently. I guess they're just really? music they're just musical collaborations. But mm -hmm. um, the names were easy to pick because I just kind of like the most um, on the nose thing I could think of are the band names. The first one is called Doug and Dan's email chain, which was <laughs> me and this guy I've never met emailing each other. So I was like, what is our band called? What, what are we with Doug and Dan's email chain? And the second That's group, a great name, though. the second group is music I make with my friend, Adam, where we just share the files, the Ableton files on Dropbox. So I said, how about we're, we're just called like Lords of Dropbox nice yeah and anyway much, so like so those are both great band names though because 
they like I feel like no matter what style of music you end up doing and no matter how long that project lasts it will it, it'll um allow for the style to change unlike like Megadeth is a tough band name to have if you're gonna go make country songs like or like if you're gonna switch directions and I was I was like that that that's sad so that in that way Bentney isn't so bad and uh you know it and and even if Dropbox goes down uh it's been vintage. <laughs> it's like MySpace or something you know <laughs> yeah what sure. I mean yeah well you know Dropbox could get have problems or something and then that's associated with right something bad they could, you know? they could be like uber someday where i don't uh, they're not they're not paying their boxes enough <laughs> i don't know if people are like thinking of their band names in terms of like what if we change our our style <laughs> i see yeah like the beatles I, you know do you think they were like well what if our music doesn't have a beat one day right they're, well they're like what, what element of music are we least likely to lose over time of oh, the beat yeah so uh -huh. what's that now what do we do well we could be the beats well that seems a little boring what if we were something cool like a bug and then it's like i could be beat bugs or what the if the rolling history. yeah what if the rolling stones you know they're like well you know we're, we're like wild party guys you know what what if one <laughs> What if one day, you know, we all settle down and it became stay at home dads and, and they're like, that's not going to happen. And they're like, you're right. We could be rolling stones for 50, 60 years. And we'll, we'll still be rolling, but <laughs> yeah. uh, Ben, you um, are very good with rhythms and polyrhythms, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm all right. I didn't think. Wait, is that something you specialized in? What was your instrument? What's your main instrument? Uh, my main instrument's guitar, and I think my my interest has always been more in songwriting and composing. Um, I, well, I shouldn't say always, but for, for as long as I've been an adult. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I think with polyrhythms and polymeters and all that stuff, I think it's like, you know, there there are a lot of ways to think about music, but then there's just the, when you turn your thoughts off and you're just feeling it, I think so much of that comes from rhythm and do you yeah. specialize do you like uh world music are you i mean is that something you studied did you study were you in was that part yeah. of your degree ethnomusicology and stuff or what well i i um so at berkeley it's a really diverse curriculum so like i was in uh the middle eastern music ensemble for a while but like being in an ensemble or taking a class definitely isn't enough to like be any sort of expert. But what happened was I took a, a class on Indian rhythmic solfege for a year, which is basically um, yeah. a system that some su South, South, Southern Indian classical musicians use to learn and think about and ultimately perform uh, uh, rhythm. And, and it, it involves using the muscle memory we get from speaking as the foundation for our rhythm. So as opposed to learning a drum or like clapping, the foundation comes from uh, these um, rhythmic syllables, for instance, for, for, two, for groupings of two, like instead of going one, two, one, two, one, two, which, which sounds like words, right? They go ta, ka, ta, ka, which sounds like drums. Yeah, Doug, so have then, you seen his, his video about this? I haven't seen that one. Well, you know how, it's, Doug, we were listening to that Indian, the, that, that video of the Indian music, and it's really crazy and stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. He can do that kind of thing. Yeah, and it, it's surprisingly easy once you um, practice it the way you might practice, you know, any instrument, like, um, slowly with a metronome. And so, so like, if you, if you were to take a rhythm, let's say, you know how 4-4 four, four is this very common rhythmic structure for music, where you're like, one, two three, four, one, two, three, four. And so four, four implies that you have one group of beats that's four things long. So one, two, three, four. But within that, you could have really any multiple of four uh, show up and you'd end up in the same place. So, so all I'm saying is you can divide that same amount of time in many ways. So one way you could divide uh, four four would be to call it sixteen sixteen, and so to do that calculation with with the Indian rhythmic solfege system, you could just be like 
what combination of numbers could equal 16. And this is just a creative exercise here. So you could say, well, how about five plus nine, uh, which is 14 plus two. So then you could think for five, it's taka takita. And then for nine, it could be taka dimi, that's four taka dimi. And then tadingina tom, which is five, tadingina tom. So, so we had, uh, what was it, five and nine? So it's taka takita, tadingi, uh, taka takita, taka dimi, tadingina tom. And then you end it with two, taka. So it's taka takita, tadingina tom, taka, or it'd be taka takita, taka dimi, tadingina tom, taka, taka takita, taka dimi, tadingina tom, taka. And now you've got this natural way that it like accents and it becomes a beat. So it's like, and you know you can end up that's still in four like that ends on the one after all that exactly yeah like i'll do it with my hands like this all right so or wait i'll actually say it uh to keep a track of it taka taki taka dimi taringina tum taka uh, yeah, taka taki to taka dimi tiding gina tum taka taka taki to taka dimi tiding gina tum taka taka taki to kadimi tiding gina tum taka taka. You can see it like landing on yeah. one, and then it, it's just like okay, four four is this whole endless universe of awesomeness, and you don't even have to feel complicated. Like it sounds complicated when I do that, but you stick a backbeat under that, and it's just like any other cool groove that people like. And I love just like going deeper and deeper into simple things as opposed to like taking a more like prog metal approach of being like, let's show everybody the math that we have incorporated into our rhythms. It's, it's more like the, with, with South Indian music, the, the rhythm is incredibly rich and complicated, but it just feels nice. It, it, it doesn't feel overly um, effortful. And, and so I took just one year of this, and this is, this is a, a, test, a testament to how great the system is, so I took one year of it, which is not enough to even claim that you're a beginner, to, to be honest. And I use it all the time. It's just so useful for, for like learning other people's parts, making up parts, thinking about like, like, how do I remember this freaking thing? Oh, well, let's just break it up into syllables. It's taka, takita, takadimi, and taringina tome. And with that, you can create every rhythm with just those. I know you do a lot of stuff about helping people with writer's block or, you know, making mm -hmm. their music, which I love. I think it's like so cool because Thanks. it is hard to, you know, finish projects, start projects, um, kind of be inspired. Do you have any like cliff notes on how to help people with that kind of stuff? Yeah, for sure. Like everything we were talking about earlier with limitations of like, why don't we just use jump cuts or like make that into an art or what, like everything behind two at crew, like the, the, being able to look at your tools and be like, instead of going into my brain and having a vision and being like, this is the perfect composition. This is the perfect show. How do I get it out? Instead, you just look at the tools that are around you that you actually have and, and react to them and be like, what's something I could make that's cool with this. And, and like look at all the parameters as like opportunities instead of, instead of thinking of it as, um, oh, I'm so limited because all I have is an acoustic guitar in my phone or something. Instead of that, it's like, there's so many options. There's too much noise. There's too many things I could do. This way, at least I know I have a, I have a, a smaller amount of things to worry about in terms of what direction to go. And I'm just gonna get started actually making something because I've got what I've got and let's go for it. The mistake a lot of people make with creativity is thinking, if I only had blank, I'd be able to blank. Right. And I and I think you know that that really holds us back. It makes us keep buying shit. And also like this idea that there's professional songwriting and then amateur songwriting. I think that's totally made up, an attempt to fit music into you know a market of some sort where there's like people who who like are making music that's good enough for people to pay for it. And then there's the rest. But I feel like there's a lot of great music that no one would want to pay for, or like very few people would pay for Like, And you know, if you look at like uh, atonal composers, like they've, they did a lot for helping people redefine what music can be and be as creative as possible. But if they dropped today, you know, it'd be like some niche genre on Reddit. It wouldn't necessarily be blowing up on Spotify. 
you know, so it's like, what's good, you know? Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I mean, with Tua <laughs> crew, um, we, we would have a monthly show um, in order to give ourselves a deadline. So we would complete something, you know? So we, we make a flyer. It's like new video premiere. Here's our show. Come to it. That way we have to like finish it and it's got to be done by that date. Otherwise, like with the basketball video, that was, that's why it took forever to come out. Cause I didn't have any, I could just keep tweaking it forever. And mm. it was just this, this, thing, this thing that didn't have a wow. deadline. So make yourself a deadline. I think that helps too. Enormous. And yeah, also, a, also with, with two rat was also very limited. Like we can only use this camera. We also made it, we made these like dogma 95 type rules with it. Like mm -hmm. the camera, we can only use, um, this one camera, but only with one battery. So we have to shoot it all. And then when the battery's dead, like <laughs> that's all the footage we got. That's awesome. You know, and also, yeah. I forgot, there were some other stupid rules, like all audio and post, of course. And also yeah, similarly, huge. by the way, that first Poundhouse video, which is kind of like the pilot called Beanbag, that was shot, uh, I don't know, almost a year before it came out, you know, I, know. I think we shot it and, know. you know, I, it, I think Doug start, like started editing it, but it didn't, and then, you know, we didn't, I, we ended up kind of doing it together with it, but it, it finally, it was like a year after it was, it finally came out. I know, I know that's, see, that's why you need a deadline, but also like, yeah, with that video and, and with a lot of projects, I, sh I shot that in, in my mind, I didn't, you know, I was totally wrong here, but I thought like, you know, that was okay. I don't, I, I don't think it was going to be that good. So that's why I wasn't inspired to like edit it. I didn't, I think, I thought it was just, it was some okay thing that like down the line, but then once it came together and we started like, then it was like, oh, this is pretty good. You know, when well, did, Bu, when did Bu and Jash get involved in Poundhouse? After that video. Okay. Well, after that video, Tim and Eric liked it a lot. And they were like, this is, the, this is the best thing you've done. Or they said something like that, you know, mm -hmm. hyperbolic. Um, That's the name of the game. Thing. And um, they were like, you know, they were involved with Jash. So they were like, I think maybe Jash was looking for content. And they were like, um, let's pitch your show to Jash. And then that was it. That's cool. Yeah, that was uh, how I found out about you, I think. I mean, um, I so... Yeah. What is your favorite? Oh, you had a thought? Oh, well, I just saw you uh, live with Tim and Eric in like 2009 or something. And then I saw that and I was like, oh, it's him. Oh, cool. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite like uh, time signature? <laughs> or no, um, what, how about this? <laughs> what's your favorite? And then like, what's the craziest time signature? Okay. Um, well, my favorite's 4-4 four, four, uh, because it's the kind of the foundation of my life in terms of rhythm because uh, I was raised on music that's mostly in 4-4, four, four, so it feels like home. It's not necessarily a universally just like fundamental human thing that 4-4 four, four is normal. It's more of a Western thing, but I was born here, so it's that's the one that I default to for sure and I feel the most comfortable in. And then I think the most complex um meter is is probably like it's probably more it's probably less like a time signature and more like the idea of nesting tuplets within tuplets so for instance you could have a space like this space between clicks and divide it into three like Da, 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 or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then each of those numbers I'm counting could then be a five, which I don't know if I can actually perform. It'd be like, da, 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 it'd be like, blah, blah, blah. it'd be like five for each of those one, two, three sub, subdividing. So now you're dividing this space into three and you're dividing each of those divisions into five. And like that sort of thing exists haven't really had a great time with it it's very hard for me to imagine anything with it but it's the kind of thing you can like plug into a DAW like a digital audio workstation for the anyone in the audience that's like a 
computer program for writing music where you can fit everything perfectly to a grid where like the timing is like robotically correct you can mess around with that stuff in there and get some really funny sounds that it sounds similar to like speeding up and slowing down a tape recorder or something like just the way that the time sort of deflates like those like wavy arm guides in front of used car dealerships like it just like whoa, whoa. and uh so yeah he, that's pretty fun i mean it i haven't really messed with that very much but it's a thing <laughs> uh, you... Wait, how, how did you let me ask real quick how did you what was like how did you get into music and in, you know early on um it, well it I, uh, berkeley yeah i was like i was at berkeley i was like oh, before I berkeley I, I know I'm just <laughs> uh it, well when i was uh growing up um i think you know maybe two big things happened one was I, I went to a synagogue every week where the cantor was particularly good at music, where where he was like using old like Eastern European and like ancient like Middle Eastern melodies as his um, source material for these services. And if you go to like Jewish services in the Northeast or like in more, most like you United States Judaism, not like the super super religious kind, but like the more middle of the road kind. If you go to services, there isn't a huge emphasis on music there's um it's there but there's a lot of like the crowd kind of mumbling like blah, 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 blah. okay it's like oh, man, you know but this guy was uncommonly the cantor at my synagogue was uncommonly emotive to the point where it was like watching you know like someone bear their soul every week but that was just normal for me and so music as a normal thing was a very like exciting like connects to your emotions thing or something where if you did your best impression of that as a you know if i did my best impression of this guy i was seeing every week i would have fun physically doing it so so it, it was it was like a meaningful expressive thing um and then when i was uh also when i was seven my parents i was very privileged to that this happened but they forced me to play piano so like I had like that, you know, lucky thing that happens when you're young and you start doing something. But I actually have a video about my my cantor that it's called um, my first musical influence, and that definitely is like one of the like highlight videos of my channel where I where I I talk about being Jewish, even though like I'm uh, like a lot of American Jews, I don't like I'm I you know I'm I don't believe the Torah is like a very in great book i'm not into it uh and like uh you know which is the old testament and i i'm not uh very like into you're in you're more into the new testament oh shit that new testament they finally got it right they were like let's put this thing in english yeah, <laughs> no i'm just kidding but yeah no i wasn't uh i'm not into any of the any of the religious books they haven't been that helpful to me yet you know judaism's a thing you know it's like a big uh part of like who i am and when I was, I, I would go search to learn about Jewish music on YouTube, which is where I learn about most things. And I found that mostly what was there wasn't very good and it was covered with anti-Semitic like comments, like from, you know, usually you'll get like a few anti-Semitic comments, but it was like a wall of anti-Semitic comments. Like if you wanna see, like look up Pava Nagila on YouTube and you'll see like what that stuff's like. And so I made that video um, to just do a video about loving something without like attaching the like theism of religion, but just the cultural elements of religion and like just a video about like w genuinely loving music, which everyone can relate to. And I'm, I've been so incredibly moved by like, th it's like a highlight in my life that that video has not had any anti-Semitic comments on it. It just ha hasn't. And it's gotten 17,000 views, which is plenty of views to like get past the, like the hardcore fans to the general public where people you know you don't know why they're coming in or what their motives are um oh i'm sorry you so, didn't get to get anyway, in on that like, action you know? yeah <laughs> you guys like all right so all the poundcast listeners you got all the ones that are anti-semitic you got to get on this video because <laughs> yeah man help this guy out man you got to get these you got, we, we need these anti-semitic comments on his videos man. Yeah, it's not please. getting in on that action that's why you got all the, the doug all the doug's call to action folks yeah 
<laughs> no, but um, no, I yeah, that's you interview the cantor and everything. You, uh, it's like yeah. a little documentary of the, of the, of, uh, you know. I mean, I personally exactly. love world music, especially music from Africa. That's like what mm. I mostly listen to if I'm putting on music nice. to like be in a good mood. That's Where do you find it? How do you like, do you have a playlist you like or anything? I have a playlist I can send you, but on, be great. on Spotify, but it's not that great because way before I had Spotify, I've been collecting it. I used to go mm -hmm. to, um, um amoeba records the giant record store and go to the world music mm -hmm. section then go to the african section and just buy stuff that looked cool and i would just find so much i mean when i was a kid i used to buy tapes and cds that looked i thought i would like and it would be like a, not a good ratio of stuff i actually liked mm -hmm. but like when i went to that one section i would like most of it i would i would like and i would just I just started building a collection of it for maybe 15 years now or something. But so on my, feel... actual, on my laptop, I have a, or on my home computers, I have like just huge collection of MP3s or whatever, but um, that's, and then, um, yeah, I would just mostly find it like that at first. Um, and then, um, yeah, I just kind of go on Spotify and other people would just share people who like the same stuff would share playlists with me and sometimes on Spotify it'll you go to the radio of that song mm -hmm. and sometimes that works pretty good but sometimes it's way off so I don't know it just sort of like to answer your question you just keep looking for it <laughs> I don't know yeah it, it's interesting like um how uh the, you know the echo chamber effect even happens in Spotify just because they know they know it's safe based on what you like so you you become more and more like in entrenched in whatever style you're into uh at the time because that's what you get fed but like uh that that practice of listening to non-western music basically music that's not like what you immediately grew up with if you if you're like me um i, I find it to be incredibly incredibly helpful for um taking the thought that we're really all humans on one planet and internalizing it as like a feeling instead of like an idea because I feel like it's a it's one thing to to know in your head like of course like people in Japan are like people here like of course like I know that but like it's different when you feel that and I, I'm sure you guys when you go to other countries and stuff you you get that feeling of like more than a thought but like it goes from the head to the heart it's like oh yeah and, 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 and like music is this great thing because it's not really a universal language because it's so di different from place to place and like the things that are appealing are subjective and change, but it's much easier and more accessible um, like, for, like as opposed to a language, which I think takes way more study to, to pick apart, like reading like a book by a Japanese author as opposed to the English translation you know like there's a lot bigger of a gap there than just like starting to get into a style of music and listen to it and you can feel like the effort that went into it and like the imagine the person's life you know in, in an interesting from like an internal perspective um yeah yeah I was al I was always drawn to like music that had like repeating kind of chants um chanting I don't know, mm. it's just in, built into my DNA or something. Like when I was a kid, I used to like repeat these like songs over and over, drive my parents crazy. Like happy birthday Is that, or whatever. Well, like I used to sing like, like, happy you know, birthday. there's like a police song that was like, EO, EO. I used to sing <laughs> over and over, like just that part. Mm -hmm. you know? And then I used to sing like Deo over and over. Deo. I used to just say Deo when I was a kid. <laughs> For some reason that I just like drawn to that kind of stuff. And then like in college, I was into like shoegaze music, which is like kind of droney. It just puts me like in a trance. And I just like like that feeling. And I think a lot of world music has that kind of kind of repetitious like sound that I am just drawn to. I also is like Indian, I also like Indian music a lot, but I yeah, I, I like there's a few songs that I like found that like I love and then I would go to the radio of it and it would send me to some like 
way off. So maybe I need to, mm-hmm. maybe you can send me some uh, tips. Yeah, for sure. Is um, Ben, Ben, do you, yeah. are you, do you like, are you, you're good at tongue twisters, I guess. Right. Obviously. <laughs> and do you like well, that? I, yeah. Well, I like rapping and. Uh, oh, really? Think, you like to rap? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love hip hop and as a result of loving something and being a musician you you want to do it and so like a in 2015 Kendrick Lamar's album to pimp a butterfly came out and um the whole my whole like bar for what makes an album good kind of just like went through the roof with that and I just uh Kendrick Lamar yeah he's my he's like one of my favorite artists for sure like he's he's the man behind uh crisscross isn't he I don't know that. Um, I don't know. I, no, I don't no, think no, so. no, no, no. I'm thinking of somebody else. Anyway, um, no, I know um, who he is. I know who he is. Yeah. King Kuta, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that album in general. And like that particular song, um, just there's, yeah, that's just a, 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 that song feels wonderful to. I was thinking play. of G- Jermaine oh, Dupree, by the way. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, well, like fundamental to rapping is. Um, the idea of flow and what flow really is to me is um it's like it, just, it happens every like what it happens you know at a certain time of the month uh, last like three or four <laughs> days yeah the south right. mouth becomes a red swamp but yeah the my my uh i stole that from my wife she calls her vagina the south mouth i want to give justice cow some credit but uh yeah um but I, yeah, I feel like uh, the, the flow from a hip hop sense is like having the muscle memory in your mouth, like as if it's a percussion instrument to just get through rhythms. And even if you fumble on a word, you, the, the meter is still moving. You're always still in line. You never like stop and then try to catch up again. It just, you keep going. So um, it, I think, you know, just like you, Doug, I like to repeat things over and over again. So, you know, I've, I've only got like a couple jokes, uh, but, the, but like, especially the Oprah joke, which is the one that got me on office hours there, you uh, know, quick, there's, there's a lot of repeating. Uh, yeah. So quick question. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I told our Facebook um, page that you were going to be here and somebody, a few people were asking about your jokes because sure. somebody I've said, uh, you have three jokes. Okay. We heard the Oprah. We heard the Harrison Ford. Now, can we get the third joke? Yeah, I I was being a little modest. I actually have a ton of jokes that, but I I was hoping maybe you guys could help me improve them because they're not like ready. A lot of them aren't very ready, but I know there's like something to it. But yeah, so so the I'll start with the the foundational Oprah joke is Oprah Winfrey and Deepak Chopra having a debate about who should be the next pope, and it goes like this: vote pope, pope Oprah, no pope Oprah, vote no pope Deepak Chopra, uh, Chopra no pope, no pope Chopra, vote no pope Oprah, and you get that through, and that's like. The, the the joke is it sounds funny, I guess. And anyway, like then uh, on Office Hours, I do a Harrison Ford joke where I just stumble over my words forever, which is like straight out of Tim Heidecker's book. And so my my third my third joke that is like is good enough, I think, uh, for like to like show you guys on Office Hours in that much more like much less laid back setting where uh, you know you could get hung up on it every, any minute. Um, that joke is more visual. So I'll just, I'll do it real quick and then I'll try to explain like what, what you saw so that at least the podcast is in on the idea knowing that that's not necessarily funny. Is that okay? If, if I give that a try? Absolutely. Whatever you want to do, you know, okay. you just do, you you know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I'll just try to make this work. So, um, you know, Wolverine from X-Men. He's got the uh, hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's got claws is- like Freddy Krueger. Yeah, like normally it's uh, Hugh Jackman, but what if this is Wolverine from X Men if he was played by Woody Allen? Ah! <laughs> so for the people at home, I just put my fingers out and looked at them and was disgusted. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's my third best joke. Now here are the other ones. <laughs> oh, so this this, this one, one was not as so much of a not as much of a tongue twister as the other right. ones. This is a different right. style of joke. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, we could punch that up. Um, <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. Uh, you know, he could say like something really kind of neurotic about, you know, like I have these fingers and I, I don't know. I can't really do Willie. My Willy adamantium Trump. claws. Yeah. 
you know, something like he's looking at them. He's just like, what am I going to use these for anyway? I've got a maid for that. So I don't know. He's like, because he's rich. But there's also this angle where people expect it to be about him dating his daughter or something. So like, I'm such like, a Wolverine. I wish I wasn't born. I wish I was just a regular wolf. Why do I have to be a small wolf? Why do I? No, I. Women, women want a real wolf. I'm just a wolf. And so I would like. What is to, it? You know, my my daughter likes my 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 finger. <laughs> I could have been any part of the wolf. Why just the claws? Why not the yeah. teeth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. I. Um, my next joke is uh, from two days ago, I brand new, um, but it's, I think it's pretty good. It's my, you know, my grandma was a teacher. She's a tough woman, you know, kind of like a, the grammar police. Any, anytime I'd say anything, I'd be like, gotta make sure that I say it right. She'd be on me in a minute. And even at her funeral, I was like, oh, boo hoo, boo hoo. And I swear I could hear her ghost saying, you mean boo whom. <laughs> See, I like that one because I saw that come in, but then you changed it. Um, yeah. I thought uh, you were going to say it wasn't, I, it wasn't exactly where I thought you were going. But nice. I thought you were going to say, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my grandma, I thought you were going to say something about she wasn't just a grammar police, she was the grandma police. You know, she was, she's a grandma, you know, she's the grandma police. Yeah. He's like, I wonder if I could force that in somehow. Something, something like that. The grandma, please. Um, yeah, well, that's, that's, that one's all right. Uh, what did the, pol the polite baby say when it came out of the womb? What did the polite baby say to the doctor when it came out of the womb? Or, or no, no. What did the baby say? Wait, wait. Mom. Hold on, Ben. You mean when it came out of the womb? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what is, that, that's like my, gut, my dead grandma should be there watching. Yeah, which, that's, the grandma. Yeah, that no, the that was the grandma police watching over that joke. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. Um, in the ER. They're like, quick, but um, we could have. Uh, okay, so what did the polite baby do when it came out of the womb? Let me think. That's the thing. He spanked himself. That would be polite. Um, he but, said. Uh, um, no, he I said, don't no, know. thanks, Doc. I got this, and started spanking. <laughs> That'd be sick. <laughs> the really no, that, polite baby. He he yeah. said. Uh, no, I'm thinking. It's a fun game because you got to pun let me, masters. Uh, the polite baby said. He said, uh, uh, "Let me get. Let me cut. Can I? You want me to cut the umbilical for you? Or <laughs> wait, 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 like, hold on a second. Did you did you want the rest of this placenta? Did you? Ooh, did you want the rest of this? There. Did you want this placenta to go? Or you're so I, close. Can I? Uh, I'm not going to eat the rest of this placenta. Do you want the, did you, I mean, you can have it if you want. <laughs> do you want, do you want to eat the rest of this would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm not going to eat the rest of this. I'm actually, I'm actually done with this. Did you, <laughs> you're oh, getting he, close. It, it he, tip, he said, uh, he tipped his delivery. He till cause it was, a, he was delivered. So he tipped the delivery doctor. Oh, the doctor delivered, so he tipped him 20%. Yeah, 20%. That's good. That's 20, 20 plus cent. 20%. 20%. Oh, 20%. Ooh, oh, my God, that's really good. Doug, that's you're really honest something, Doug. He gave that, him a 20% so, discount. <laughs> there, I think you're like, you just achieved the joke with different words. Because um, mine was the doctor and the baby exchanged placentaries. Oh. <laughs> like pleasantries. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, yeah, like I got. A, I have a good idea for a game. I mean, let's wrap. Why don't we wrap the, up right now? Okay. Um, and then I got an look, idea for a game. Look, um, Ben. So I don't know. We might not have told you this, but we do a little bonus thing for the Patreons. Mm -hmm. for the patrons. Would you want to hang out for that? It's totally optional. Hell yeah. Okay. I hang out um, all day. All right. Cool. Well, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap up the main episode. Thank you, Ben Levin. Ben. Thank you. Once again, on your YouTube show. channel is Ben Levin. Yeah. E E N L E V I N. Yeah, and I like my newer stuff more than my older stuff. If anyone wants to go in reverse chron chronological order, I'd greatly appreciate it. And thank you for spreading positive <laughs> positivity and healing the, the uh, psychological wounds of the internet. 
for Thank you, you too. I know what you mean, by the way, Ben. I, I, uh, um, I have this video game music podcast, and I think I would rather somebody went backwards. I'm down for people to listen to all the episodes, but I'd rather they go backwards. Yeah, I feel like I changed, I changed a lot. You know, I feel like we die many deaths. And, like, the person I was when we started the channel is uh, just about dead. Uh, like, there's almost none of that guy left. Hmm, here, I'm you know? interested in that. And, yeah, I mean, like, well, how you how this... different you were, and what what uh, you know. Yeah, I guess we'll I guess... talk about that. We'll talk about oh, that. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Thank you, Ben, I'm and down. for the rest of y'all. We'll thank you to LouisvilleVeganFoods.com, code word Poundcast, and we'll see you all next week on the Poundcast. Welcome to After Dark. We Whoa. are we are Poundcast Welcome. After Dark. Welcome to After Dark. Welcome to After, Welcome to after Dark. dark. Actually, Welcome can, to After Dark. Can you guys talk for a sec? I have to go to the bathroom real quick. Brent, you got this? Yeah. Welcome to After Dark. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, wait, how are you? Um, I mean, I don't know if I should ask this without Doug being here, but how are you so different than, what, what do you mean a different person? What, talk about that. What do you mean? Oh, well, um, well, you know, it's, it gets less and less dramatic as you get older, but you know how like you look at your like 13 year old self and you're like, wow, poor thing. Uh, well, see me, I've never changed. I've always been the same since I, was, I came out the womb like that. I came out the womb dang. like this, you know? <laughs> do you, do you feel that really? Like you're uh, like, you're pretty solid. Like, you know, I've always been Brent. Pretty much. I mean, I, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of variation here and there, but um, I'm mm -hmm. pretty similar. I think I'm pretty similar to uh, the way I've always, I've always been the same, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I've grown, I've matured, but uh, yeah. yeah, no, I've matured. I've had, I've had revelations. I've, you know, uh, epiphanies and so forth, but mm -hmm. I think I'm kind of a very much the same person I've always been. Yeah. I think of it like um, kind of going backwards a lot where, uh, you know, like when you, when you lose like a grandparent or something and they've like been through a big medical ordeal, like who they were like right at the end often is like way different than who they were most of their life. And so like the, the real dying, like, like if your grandma had like Alzheimer's, let's say or Parkinson's, the real dying took course from the time like they were with it till the time they weren't and then like mm -hmm. yeah they disappear but like they, they they're like really the what lots of little things die like your ability to have a uh, meaningful conversation or for them to notice anything besides like your visual physical appearance or whatever it is like and so I think of that like in our lives just how we gradually we're like it, it, like death is this sort of cascade that that happens where it's like gradually lots of little things end permanently and that's not necessarily bad eventually it becomes sad but not necessarily bad and uh and for me like 2010 me was um had like a fundamentally different musical purpose and uh was like you know i'll make youtube videos so that people sign up for guitar lessons from me and I'll make a living that way. And I was very like focused on the notion of cr like creating uh, financial stability and, 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 and using everything as a means to an end. But now I see like the most important thing for me is to make everything an end in itself. So if I'm going to make an Instagram post, it's not necessarily just to, get people to check out something else. I want it to be something that makes Instagram in some way special. Like I want, I want that to be like part of my art too. So that's you know, awesome. I say a bunch, that, like, you know, that's so you're a really saying cool you became less the, self self-serving kind of uh, or something. Or maybe self-serving in a different way where like now what I really want to do is like make a difference so that I feel good about myself. Cause I still think I have, you know, uh, that immense selfishness, but the only way I can like, let myself have a nice thing is if I do community service too, or if I like, like I start, you, you know, like if I give Patreon money to office hours and I like have to also subscribe to a monthly, like give money, like feed the children thing. Like I, like, and that, that's me. That's, that, that's another way of me doing self aggrandizing stuff. Cause I know that's also a trait people tend to admire. So I'm not like divorced from the ego 
aspect of it. It is very much like a pat on the back all the time, but I need that in order to like have nice things. Uh, and that's really different than before. Um, it's like a carbon, so, yeah, like, it's like a carbon credit of, of selfishness or something. Right. Yeah, it's like, like offsetting. You get, but like how 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 is giving office how is subscribing to the office hours patreon uh super selfish to you i don't think of it as super selfish i think it is um you know i'm putting five dollars and i say this with all the love and all the like passion for peace and love show is yeah this is a peace and love i'm saying this with peace and love um like i'm supporting uh people who you know have like good lives and I'm trying to help them make something really cool that's going to make me feel good and lots of people laugh and it'll make those people with good lives have better lives um in in some ways and and that's nice and then I think about all the people who are completely invisible who have by my standards at least really 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 hard lives who don't have the ability to like feed people something like a that would make them give them patreon money they're they're like below the threshold where they can even reliably be reached on youtube like they might not even have access to youtube or that you know i think about that and i think like well what what am i doing for them too like they deserve patreons too but they can't have a patreon because they're what they're doing is not necessarily valued in the market in some way where like 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 i i feel like people who come to the u.s because they have they're like running from um, from the cartels are doing a really important service by trying to put their kids in a better, uh, safer, less traumatic situation. However, they are deciding to do it. That's a major service because then those kids go on to be, you know, the like inspiring or do just even if they're just normal, they're like not in the cartels and they're like, and they're they're alive and that's really important but there's no like patreon for that there's indie there's other things there's indiegogo or like uh there's like uh, you know um there's like uh go fund me um yeah and and well there, there's like um the southern poverty law center or there's the uh j fund justice for our neighbors and things like that and so i'm just trying to balance out like how much am i supporting the the machine that's already going in this wonderful positive direction and how much am i helping bring people into it Cause like I look at, at like our, our collective privilege as just like, this is great stuff. Let's get everyone in rather than being like, you know, Hey, shame on you for making office hours while people are starving. That's not how I'm saying it. I'm saying it like, I want them to be able to just sit back and enjoy office hours on a Thursday morning instead of, you know, whatever they, whatever is making it so they can't, you know what I mean? So that's what I, what I mean by that. That's awesome. YOLO stuff. Just a little bit of YOLO. Uh, okay, so that's how you've changed over the years is that um, you uh, are a little more conscious of other people's benefit. I, I like when the old me – I like when, the, when I die at one of those deaths because I feel like I'm different than I was three months ago. You know, At the start of the quarantine, I was different than I am now. I – Yeah. I changed a lot for the better, I think. Really, Doug? Yeah, I think so. Elaborate. How so? Um, I, I, um, I pretty much quit drinking. Um, I say pretty much because I'll have a little bit here, like once a month or twice a month, have some wine. But um, I started like um, just working on my health. I lost a bunch of weight, maybe How many? 12 pounds or something i'm trying to get down to your weight what do, what do you weigh brent 120 okay i'm not gonna get that low <laughs> but i was at like 155 153 155 now i'm at 140 so i actually think right now i'm at 123 or something like oh that. my god <laughs> that's too low i don't think i can get that low i got too many i got too many big muscles <laughs> i'd have to like chop an arm i'm just saying i got i feel like much uh, I, you know, the whole uh, virus thing made me think I should just be as healthy as I can, which, so it was a kind of like a, a blessing in disguise or like a, a silver lining of, of think- the virus thing. It made me like folk, uh, try to eat healthier and, um, just be more healthy. So did your, did your work, your workout album 
kind of help with that too? Like, did you feel like when you made, <laughs> by making that, it sort of like put it in your head? Like, this is like part of who I am. I'm a guy who works out. Actually, no. I mean, truth be told, um, I've only done that workout a couple times. I just did it so other people can, I mean, I want to promote, that's nice. I mean, that's, that's the reason I made it too. Cause I, I do want to promote, uh, positive things like that. Um, you know, working out and stuff like that. I do well, exercise, but I don't actually do my own exercise, but I was thinking about maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it like, like a live stream it or, you know, I've been thinking about, yeah, doing, that's a good idea. Just everyone hit play at the same time and we'll all do it together on i i feel like if it was a giant zoom you could you know everyone could hear it or yeah even if it was a stream just with obs you could, everyone could hear it like can i just your, do it on instagram me. live or should i do youtube or what do i what how do i use that what i feel like you, you could do a really good twitch channel because like you know twitter like it seems to me like you you tell people about stuff through twitter and instagram mostly but then your like work lives on youtube uh is that accurate you think or? um yeah but i think nowadays mo like when i do videos most people see it on it seems to do much better on uh instagram instagram you know, well i guess it, it if, also goes to you, youtube you know yeah i feel like if you were to just have a twitch and tell all those people twitch is a thing and i do the, i'm gonna do this workout thing I feel like you would have already be off to like a really good start and then you get to benefit from like all the Twitch, you know, the, the like the whole Twitch economy thing where people expect to pay people they like to, for streaming. Like it's How just does expected. Work? I'm not on Twitch. So I'm, I'm, you know, I can only give like this vague thing where subscribe subscriptions have like actually are like partially paid or like there's some like way you get tokens to subscribe that has, has to do with like actual money and people mm -hmm. people go to youtube for a million different things but they only go to twitch for one thing which is to watch a stream so like live streaming on youtube is uh you know it's competing with um uh, like all these people who are there for makeup tutorials but live streaming on twitch you're competing with other people who are also streaming which is like the same medium so it's you're it's like all about how good of a stream you are rather than how good of a stream you are plus do people even want a stream um so so like it yeah twitch is like a great place for a workout daily kind of thing people just are used to hanging out with a stream on all right it's, it's interesting all right all right, all right we'll yeah, do I, it i um i just wanted to do my one workout tape i don't know if i could do that every day i mean i would get in really good shape right. if i did that but yeah. What else? Any any other differences in your life uh, as a besides sort of physical differences or Doug? Uh, have you changed your personality or emotionally or anything like that? Um, well, I mean, the whole Black Lives Matter protest made me, you know, a little more. Um, I always, you know, I've, I'm out, I've always been an empathetic person, but I think it just sort of like raised in another level of awareness and compassion and like sort of like leaning back on like trying to promote myself and like, you know, kind of have my mind on um, other bigger issues in the world instead of like, you know, just trying to, yeah, I, I just took a break from uh, being creative and like more of like just studied what was going on and kind of like, you know, got my mind into that um, world of, you know, um, awareness about these issues, you know, so um, I don't know. I just think so you're like, you're a cuck now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a total cuck. Yeah. Fresh off the... Off the factory I became a beta uh, liberal libtard. Libtard. A little bit <laughs> more tarded on the lib. A card-carrying cuck. <laughs> exactly. I have a game idea. Uh, this is kind of, you know. Ooh, we should do games. Yeah, these are. I, I have a funny, a fun game idea. This is based on what was just happening earlier with the whole pregnant, the, the womb coming out of the womb thing. Uh, one of us has to give 
the setup and then we have to think of different punchlines for the setup you know what i mean or whatever like you oh, know what i mean like kind of like what you did just basically you said what are the ba- what do the polite baby say when he came out of the womb oh okay and then yeah. we have to just think of like funny pun- you know what what could be the a good punchline to it so that sounds great so we I, I don't know we have to like also come up with these setups as well that we might not even know the answer to but um you know anyway yeah that's yeah. fun so i mean i don't know do you want to Someone want to start it off? I guess I could start it off. I mean, I don't know oh, I, I I've got one. Uh, why did Pooh invent pee? Why did do you have an answer pee? for this already? I do, but I'll refrain from. Okay, I like, see. Okay, I'll, I like this. I like this. I like that we can come up with um, our answers and then we'll compare it to what your answer is. You know. Oh, I have. Okay, I have a punchline yeah. for that. <laughs> he wanted something to wash it down with. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's good <laughs> that's good uh let's see i messed up the premise it's why did pee invent poo can we switch to that because mine doesn't make any sense if it's poo inventing pee okay why why, why did pee invent poo Hold on, yeah thanks think. why did pee invent poo uh because he he wanted something to be he wanted something to be afraid of because he's he was yellow he was yellow oh i don't know it's, i don't know <laughs> um, uh, why didn't he invent poo um yeah because he wanted to make a splash oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god that is really good oh, Doug. That's, that's so amazing. good Doug. that is really good oh my god that's a really good we one. should just you write own- full full comedy sets with yeah Dude, that's a good one actually you own the joke now because mine is definitely not that good. Wait, hold on. Let me. Let's, 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 wait, I don't want to hear the final answer. I mean, I can keep I going. Just, I have some more answers here. Let's yeah, see. Let's Why it. did P invent poo? I mean, like, because he felt uh, like a nut. Because he felt like he wanted some corn. I don't know. Or no, but something like <laughs> he wanted something more solid in his life. You know, like he wanted. Yeah, that's good. He wanted more, like, um, like he was, or or he needed something to float. You know, something about floating. He 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 needed. He wanted to just float float through life or something like that or like float <laughs> something about floating or um something about solid being more solid you know like uh, wishwashy uh, well you don't just think out loud you got to think of it and then drop <laughs> i know i know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> don't talk us we're through brain, your thought process all right ben what's the answer <laughs> why did uh p invent poo because poo makes p look good <laughs> And you know which phone would you rather get on you? So, <laughs> Doug wins. <laughs> I gotta okay. say, uh, makes a splash is the perfect punchline because because P wanted to make a splash. I don't see how it could be better than that. It's it's so good because it's like the P does get splashed. You it know already I mean? does make a splash. Yeah, it's part no, of his no, job. No, it, it, it gets. It, the poo causes the pee to splash out, you know? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yes, that's right. He's already there. In the Because no one poos no one poos and then pees. Everyone pees and then poos, uh, at right. least in my well, house. Actually, hold on a second. You know what? <laughs> well, it depends. You know, it depends. Mm, interesting. Oh, Is that like a oh. joke? I wasn't trying that's to make a like joke. A, I, I really am saying oh, okay. it depends. Like, sometimes the, I actually would say that the pee... Pee and the poo, they come at different times. Sometimes it's different orders sometimes, you know? Yeah. I, Brent, I, think I don't know if this is a sandwich. I don't know if this game is going to work. You have to, I mean, pee and poo is a perfect. No, no, no. Thing. Sometimes I'm saying we can come up with setups that aren't even, that we don't even know the answers to. And we can right. find the answers on the show right now. So for example, look. How about this? I'll think like, of a punchline and. And then I'll match it up with your setup, and it'll well, be like, I, I have a setup. joke that'll be like maybe. Okay, I'm gonna think of a, a punchline. Wait, what did the lazy baseball player say to the coach? I don't know the answer to this. I just came up with it. Mm. The lazy baseball I mean, player. I uh, thought like. Hey, I, uh, thought, I, like, I got it. Yeah, I got it. it. Can I just get the second base? Let's go all the way <laughs> the third. <laughs> um, uh, That's funny, man. You're good, man. You're really good. What, what, joke, if, what if it was a little? What if it was a little different? What if it was? Um, what did the lazy base 
What did the lady, lazy baseball player say to the first base coach? No. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm what not about going. This? <laughs> I'm staying home. How about this? I'm staying I'm home. Staying home. How about this? He's like, batter. he's like yeah. this. This is what this. Okay, I got. I I just thought of this. If I, I, you know, okay. What did the the lazy baseball player say to the coach? He's like, uh, look, uh, I'm too tired to come in today, but I will be dreaming about it. I will be dreaming about <laughs> baseball. Bat, I will be dreaming. Bat. About it. <laughs> I don't know about that one. The uh, bat. What did what did the batter say to the pitcher? Or what did the batter say to the umpire? Oh, can I just stay home? I don't know. It's a. Uh, I think we got it. I think. Oh, can uh, I just stay home? Yeah, that's really good, yeah. actually. Because like the batter would, who would the batter say it to? You know, maybe like to the, to the the um the umpire. <laughs> no, no, Sick. this is what it is. What did, what, no, what, what, what did, no, I got it. I got it. I got it. What did the agoraphobic <laughs> batter say to the pitcher? Can I just stay take, home? Can I'm afraid of leaving home. Out of okay. crowd. I'm afraid of leaving home. Because of agoraphobia. Well, I, I mean, mine worked as is, I think, but you're getting too specific. How about this? What did. Uh... <laughs> what did the, <laughs> the, uh, the union busting umpire say? To the batter. Wait, wait, what? The union what? The union busting. <laughs> you're you're on strike or your strike's over? <laughs> st strike. <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, st another strike. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> what is it? Yeah. You know, that's, I, I, I feel like it could be a topical joke if there just was a little bit of coronavirus. In right. Because now that's happening. Okay, how about this? How about the, I don't know the answer to this, but it's just like, what did COVID-19 say to SARS? What? I don't know. We I'm, both I'm, from, I'm, I'm, uh, I, oh, wait, well, no, I, have another, I have another baseball joke real oh, quick. Okay, okay. <laughs> what did the incredulous um, base runner say when uh, he, got, he got thrown out at home base? The incredulous... <laughs> Get out of here. No, he said, uh, man, that just came out of left field. Uh, uh, uh. There's a lot of baseball puns to be worked with. Here. Yeah. Well, okay. Now you're just coming up with full on setups and punchlines over here. Well, now. yeah. I mean, might as well. How about this? Uh, uh, I. I have to think about it. You say, what was your other I, coronavirus? And I, I don't know. I was just coming up with whatever. It doesn't even matter. I could say something. I could just make up whatever. I could say, what did the, what did the TV, what did the television set say to the, to the, mo the movie theater? How about this one? What did the fart say to the sneeze? <laughs> okay. Let's I think right. the potty, if we stick with the potty humor. <laughs> okay. Let's think about that. What did the fart say to the sneeze? He's like, I'm not so, or, or, it, well, because sneezing is kind of like closing the door on a fart. So I'm thinking like, it's like rude to sneeze at a fart. But, <laughs> yeah, hold on, let me think. He's like, hey, my eyes are down here. <laughs> what, are the, what are the farts that sneeze? My eyes are down here? I don't know. <laughs> or how about like something like, like, uh, all right, what did the fart say to the sneeze? He's like, you call that a nose? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is this? a nose. Like, he's referring to his butthole as a nose somehow. Yeah. Like, um, at you? At you? At you? At you? And then right, right the back at say? you. Right back at you. <laughs> or how about this? Like, <laughs> you call those boogers? <laughs> It's like Let's he's referring to the poo chunks that are going to come yeah. out. These are boogers. Yeah. <laughs> that one you need to have like a three panel cartoon. Strip. How about this? Nice try. Um, if you really want to, I don't know, gross people out. It's like, yeah, it's like. 
it's like okay it's like this. try doing like, that try doing that in some in a in an elevator well it's also Ooh. like okay you we know need what? a new setup this is this one's dead well no, no i got Ooh. one more kind of angle on it is a little bit is i don't know exactly how to say it but the angle would be something like that just involves once you only took care of once i don't know something about like that's only the audio, the the sense of hearing, you know, is the sneeze. It just makes a noise. But he, this, the farts got smell and it's got it's got sound and smell. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So it's like he's he's upping the ante somehow. Something about him upping yeah. the ante is like just one sense. I got two cents. Something like that. I don't know. You know, like the the sneeze juice is really sad. The the nose like. The nose got kicked out, or the the nose kicked the sneeze juice out, and then the farts like, oh, that motherfucker won't even let me in. <laughs> How about this, Brent? Right. It's like, <laughs> he goes, oh, a sneeze? Yeah, that just you, you, people only know about that with their ears. People know <laughs> about me with their nose and ears. I don't know. That's just my two cents. <laughs> I feel like if you, that's like the kind of joke that will be funny if you say it really loud. What about like this, like, uh, oh, you think you're, it's like, oh, your nose did that? He's like, oh, the nose did that? Well, <laughs> smell this. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, hey, tell your boss <laughs> to, yeah, hey, nose. how about, tell your boss, tell your boss to get a load of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, funny, dude. Tell your boss. <laughs> or tell your dad, yeah. Oh, dad, yo, oh, yeah. He's like, well, tell your dad. To check oh, dad threw guy. you out? <laughs> Can I tell you my fifth, my fifth best joke? Yes. Oh, okay. We'll guess uh, the punchline, too. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can guess this punchline. Yeah, I bet you'll guess it. Um, uh, so I was at a, I just saw over there, I saw Gordon Ramsay crying in the corner of the room. And I went up to him and I said, famous chef, Gordon Ramsay, why are you crying? And now it's up to you. Oh, he and he said, "It's awful, because it's <laughs> awful, <laughs> because it's raw. Because it's, it's horrible. Because these onions are raw. <laughs> it's raw. <laughs> because it's raw. Oh, it's dreadful. Oh, dreadful. <laughs> dreadful. Because it's because, dreadful. Uh, what is this show called? Hell's Kitchen. Wait. Okay. <clears throat> why was he crying? Let's see. Why was Gordon Ramsay, famous chef Gordon Ramsay, crying? Yeah, of all people." Like, because it's disgusting. It's disgusting. No, um, because uh, wait, why was he crying? I don't know. I think I'm stumped on this one. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Gordon, think about his name, Ramsey. Because I just he just got rammed. See, see? he just got rammed. See, <laughs> it's that's a very different direction than I took it, but I like it a lot. Well, like he got rammed in the butt and it hurt. Yeah, yeah. No, because he goes. <laughs> I don't see any Rams around here. They're making me sad because my namesake isn't um, valued. Yeah. Wait, why was he crying? Did you say weeping or crying, or does it matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. He's crying. He's really sad. He's distraught. Wait. Okay. What are his shows? Gordon Ramsay. Uh, Gordon. 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 I'm thinking Gordon. Because Gordon's blue. Oh yeah, it's Gordon. Wow, that was so good, Doug. Oh my god, that was really good, Doug. Yeah. Because Gordon's blue. That is really yeah. good. Doug is like is just the <laughs> best. He's a joke machine. He's, a, he's actually a true joke machine. Me and, you know, your, yeah. I was like, I was really yeah. trying to get him on at midnight. You know? I know. I, I mean, I'm the most slept on joke writer in Dude, Hollywood. I think you're such a good at midnight guy. <laughs> get me well, on at midnight. I, Bring it on back. Office Points. Hours Tim is always turning to you. He's like, I need a joke. He's like, what's the pun for this? Like, like even before the episode I was on, I, he was like, I need three titles. He's like, turn to you and, and you're like, I got you. And it, I don't even know how. My title one, it was the, so it was the cigarette, 12 um, cigarettes. 10 healthiest cigarette recipes or something. I mean, Gordon's <laughs> yeah. because, because Gordon blue, because Gordon's blue. That was good, man. Really good. Yeah. All right. What That's was high the level? Um, well, so it's like Gordon Ramsay, why are you crying? And he says, Everything I make turns into shit. <laughs> I like that. It just could be any any chef. Yeah. Uh, insert any chef. 
You can say, why yeah. did the chef, why was the chef crying, you know? Yeah, but he's got to be famous. Yeah. <laughs> hey, people love way, a joke with famous people in it. The, the Harrison Ford joke you're talking about, was you, you kind of messing it up or repeating it and stuff? That's part of yeah. the joke, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that's, that. I that's like the that. whole thing. I like, like that. I, I like that. I like that. Thank you. I'm really glad Vic asked me to tell the joke again because I was able to, like, re reinforce that it was on purpose because otherwise I think people thought I was just like so nervous that I couldn't no, no, say no, the I, joke. I, yeah. I just want that. No, I like that. Uh, I, I thought so actually. I thought, I thought that was part of it. Anyway, um, let's, let's do another new setup here. Let's get a, um, here, like something, you know. Okay. I thought of a joke. I mean, these are just, I'm just looking at things on the internet <laughs> and I already have punchlines for them, but like, who's the most basic rapper? Mm. Common. No. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> Common. Common. Common? That sense. Common. Common. Oh, that's funny. I thought you were yeah. gonna say, "What's the most basic rapper?" I was gonna say Saran, uh -huh. <laughs> or uh, you know, uh, or something like that. You know, Saran. Uh, I don't know. Gift. Uh, or yeah, gift. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> rapper. But, uh, how about this one? Like, what did the microphone say to the podcast? Hmm. what did the mic um what did the microphone do you have an answer for this or no i don't i do not i do not oh jeez. Oh, i guess sure. okay he, here's what he said sure <laughs> <laughs> let's see the microphone sure 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 <laughs> oh oh you know if it's not really any of our style of joke, but if you wanted to make fun of a celebrity that is on podcasts all the time, but doesn't do anything else, the microphone could smell like that person. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, it's yeah, like, yeah. It's, but it's not really, I don't know. It's like Scott Ackerman. It smells like Scott Ackerman. I don't know. But he's Hold on, I almost have it. I almost have the joke. It, it, what it did the be... rap, I have, another, I have more joke, more rap jokes. If you want. <laughs> Brand Sorry, fine, on go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> What did the baby chicken, what sound did the baby chicken make um, when it heard its first emo rap album? <laughs> baby chicken? Okay. The baby chicken? What sound did the baby chicken make when, 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 it, when it was listening to its emo rap? Emo rap. Um emo rap wow. so like lincoln 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 bach <laughs> i can't no, believe you even thought of anything he made a little peep <laughs> okay is little peep a guy isn't that that like emo rapper kid i don't know i never, I never, heard, of, I never even heard of the broad okay hey uh, <laughs> how about this um you, let's no, get he, back, let's he, get back there's to a documentary like about him on netflix i think it's really good he died let's, like let's get back to bodily uh -huh. stuff here let's get back to the base stuff so what did the penis say to the belly button? Um, <laughs> not to brag, but I just, I, not to brag, but I'm knocking on your door. Or, I don't know. Right, right. Something about, like that. Like, it's like, yeah. uh, here, give me a, give me a, I don't know. Something like, not to brag, <laughs> but give me a, I don't know, something. Not to brag, but I see you. Or, I don't know. or it's like, how about like. <laughs> uh, he's like, what if he's like, hey, this is what he said to the belly button. He said, he goes, uh, he's like, sorry, I'm bit, sorry. So I don't mean to uh, cramp your style. I'm just, I'm, he's, oh, sorry. I didn't, uh, something like that. I'm moving in or something like that. I don't know. Like, or like, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just big. I, how about this? Oh, uh, how about this? How come I only get to see you when Jennifer's here? <laughs> I feel you know, like. That's pretty good. But, pretty good. <laughs> um, I feel like oh, it's like. How come I only get to see you when Brian's around? <laughs> <laughs> or like take Mind it if I, dark. Why? <laughs> how come I only get to see you when cousin, when uncle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, how come um, I only get to see you? How, how come I only get to see you when Gordon gets rammed? See? <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> what is? I I feel like I ha I'm on the verge of one, but just like um. Oh, oh, the penis is like, let me fill you in. Because <laughs> uh, you, oh, you get sperm in your... Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You get sperm yeah. in there sometimes. 
he, let me fill you in on what's been going on down here. <laughs> <laughs> going dong down here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what did what did the ball say to the other ball? And I'm talking about testicles. Mm. What up? Or, you got to move out. <laughs> Don't like that. Like, um, or like. Uh, oh, congrats on your SAG award. Oh, that's <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> I can't. I, my joke grade is much shorter, like lower than yours. But I'm learning. Well, no. What? What about? Okay, fine. What are the? Wait, how about this? Uh, what do you? What, one said, "Hey, what's for lunch today?" And the other one said, "I'm just brown bagging it." <laughs> Same as every day. I got a brown bag lunch. I got a brown bag lunch. <laughs> oh, really? I got the uh, mushroom uh, soup, the clam chowder. Oh, I got brown bag lunch. I don't know, because he's full of semen, but I don't know. Hey, it's tricky making jokes. <laughs> Why? Wait, how, how about one one nut said, uh, busted. <laughs> <laughs> one, to, one what was like, you, uh, what did, what did Doug's testicle say to the other, or wait, I'll do me because I know my dad's name. What did my testicle say to the other testicle? Like, oh, you look like Mark. Or no, wait, it'd be my grandpa. My grandpa <laughs> looks like testicles is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> right, right, right. Wait, he right, looks right. like a testicle, it, like the gland or like the, the, the wrinkly the, the scrotum sack. sack. The scrotum. The general aesthetic. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay, this is what it is. Oh, I got it. I got it. Then, then here's, the, here's the setup to what you're trying to say, I think, is that what did the genealogist say when he saw uh, when he saw your your scrotum hmm he said oh i see the resemblance to your grandfather or something oh, oh I, yeah. I see where you i see where you got your looks or <laughs> you look okay, just no, like is, your grandfather is, yeah no, no no this is what it is actually what did the genealogist say about your grandfather <laughs> oh i see where your <laughs> scrotum got its looks from or something like that. Well, the <laughs> genealogist has to be like also a gynecologist or something and is investigating flaps or, or he's a genealogist <laughs> slash penisologist what is, what is a penisologist Bonop, it's a gynecologist bonologist. opposite a urologist right a urologist yeah okay that makes sense i mean do they yeah. check out scrotums though urologists uh, well i mean mine does <laughs> Uh, no, I, I had a, that reminds me of a experience that I often have where you go to the doctor and they're like, so what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a musician. They're like, oh, you make a living at that? I said, Why don't you just shut up and touch my peepee? -pee? And that happens. I, That's I actually one of my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, sometimes people laugh. Wait, do, the, do, do the joke one more time. I was kind of like thinking about, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> it's just not worth time. it. Let me, let me take okay. it. You ever go to, wait, okay, well, I, it's not, there's nothing clever about it. It's just the idea that this guy is asking me, okay, you want to hear it? Mm -hmm. Ready? Here we go. Yeah. I go to the doctor and I say, I say, uh, he's like, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a musician. And he's like, oh, you, you make a living out of that? And I say, oh, why don't you shut up and just touch my peepee? -pee? <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> like okay, you're, yeah, Like yeah. you're supposed to. Right. Because <laughs> that's his job. And uh, I, don't need, I don't need to hear it. I don't need to explain it, validate my life. <laughs> I'm supposed to I just, check I just need bumps. you to validate this penis here. Yeah, there you go. That's better. I knew it'd be worth saying it because, because you guys you guys are uh, better at the jokes and I'm learning so no, much no, today. No, no, no. Oh. I'm not. I'm, but I will say this. I got a joke. I have an answer to this too, actually. So <laughs> you can come up with your own answer. But what are the balls? Okay. What are the balls? Testicles, that is. What do the balls mm. say to the nipples? I got an answer for it too. Um, I can produce milk even in a boy. Or... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. That's actually probably better than mine. Actually. Um, I might have. What the balls say to the nipples? Yeah, I mean, Ben's really on the right track there. I mean, it's brought, well, yours is better actually. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see. You're just modest. <laughs> 
I I don't have one for that, Brent. Um, no, it was basically it was basically you think you got milk, but, <laughs> but I I actually kind of like better. that. Hey, I could I could do milk in a boy. <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs> See, but the like way that. you said it, that was definitely better. I can do milk in a boy. It's better. That's but, better than what I. What, however, I phrase it. I just like boy. It's like whoa, wow. Right. That's sick. But I also kind of like. It's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, I was trying to like, I was trying to think of like, maybe I should incorporate in the setup something to do with the, with like the, the got milk, you know, campaign or whatever, you know? Yeah. Well, I have a joke. everyone's got milk more inclusive. You have an um, answer to it or just the setup? I got the answer too, but. <laughs> All right. Well, don't give us the answer. No, okay. You know what a, you know what a Karen is, but we don't call them Karens on the show. We call them Kanye's. Okay, yeah, I, I was there for that. What did uh, what did Karen, what did Karen say to Bruce Wayne? What did Kanye help me out over here? What did Kanye, what did Kanye uh, say to Bruce Wayne when he was walking around in public at the store, at Costco? Oh, he's like, stop wearing something about the mask. Like, get that mask. I'm not going to wear something about like, oh, you're wearing a mask. I'm not going to, I don't like that. No, it's Bruce Wayne. So he's not in character. Oh, so oh you're, right, you're, says, right, you're right. You're right. You're um, right. Excuse me. Shouldn't you be wearing a mask? Oh, I don't know. But that's the, that's the opposite of a Kanye. I wish yeah. that the Kanye's were complaining about that. Well, well I, don't, I don't, I think they, the Kanye's complain about, they're just, they're just entitled and they're complaining mm, about mm, stuff. Mm, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And also that tone of like, Instead of being like, uh, hi, equal person who I would like to share my opinion with, it's like, <laughs> you dumb piece of shit right. from the hell that I hope you die. How about this? Um, what did the general practitioner say to the COVID positive citizen? I don't know. This is dumb. Wait, the COVID positive citizen? What, um, what did the, the general practitioner Kanye say to, <laughs> say to the, the, the citizen when, uh, when he grabbed his scrotum? <laughs> he said, uh, okay, now cough. Turn your head and cough. Turn your head and cough. I don't know. What? <laughs> you know, like that, that, um, that, oh, right, right, right. What's that, um hernia the hernia test they give you they they tell you to turn your head and cough and they grab your they put a finger on your scrotum and somehow they can tell if you have a hernia okay i got i got a joke i got a joke and I'll, i have an answer for it okay uh what did the um what did what did dr steven tyler <laughs> <laughs> what did dr steven tyler say <laughs> wait hold on hold on no, 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 forget it. I take it back. What did Steven Tyler say <laughs> to the urologist? Um, Wait, well, hold on, hold on. I got it, I got it. What are the, what are the, 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 I got it, I got it. What did Steven Tyler say to his, his, yeah, the, the neurotic urologist? Hmm. Hmm. Or here, if you, I can also word it this way. What did Steven Tyler say to his, say to his doctor when his doctor started? Uh, no, no. Yeah. It was not, not, you know, yeah. When he, when he went for a checkup and the doctor was kind of before the, forget it. Just what did he talk? What did he say to his, uro, what did he say to his urologist who was freaking out? He's neuro oh, yeah. What did he say to his neurotic neuro urologist? That's fine. Um, I, I was no thinking idea. like, what's your well, joke? I'm on I'm on this track of like arrow piss or peeing on, <laughs> but I don't know. They're not leading me anywhere. Yeah, all right. I'll just give you the answer. He said, "Get a grip." <laughs> Get a grip is the name of an Aerosmith album, by the way. Right. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> but it's also it's also like 
you know, it's, it's like, if he's neurotic, he's like, get a grip, like, you know, mentally. And then also touch his penis. He wants him to grip his penis because, you know, to do the testing and stuff. Okay. I have a joke. Ready? And this could, we could wrap it up after this. If you want, this is a big closer. All right. (laughs) What did Steven Tyler say to Ben when Ben asked, how, how are you going to get upstairs? What did he say to Ben when, he's, when Ben asked, how, how are you going to get ben upstairs? Ben goes up to Steven Tyler and he goes, Steven Tyler, how, how am I going to get upstairs? <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me think. Steven Tyler said, walk this way. You know, oh, he said. said Fu-. No, hold on. Don't, don't say it. He said. <laughs> he said. Uh, <laughs> Perry. Joe Perry. Wait, Joe Perry? He or said, Stephen, how are you, what are you going to use to get upstairs? Okay, hold on. What are you going to use to get upstairs? Oh, an arrow, like an Aerosmith, like something about like, well, I need something to build. I need, to, I need somebody who can build me something that can take me, that can fly me up there like an Aerosmith, you know, something like that. Nope. Arrows. You ready for is the it, answer? Wait, mean, wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Let's, just, let's just brainstorm on it for just a little more here. Hold on. What are you going to use? Hold on. Aerosmith. Mm. Think about Aerosmith or Joe Perry. No, it's, yeah. it's even Tyler. Well, it could be either. The whole band could have said it. You know, I see. Okay. Tyler so. said it, but it might be. <laughs> Famously. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Tyler said it, but it could have been anyone in the, in the band. What did what what did Steven Tyler famously say when Ben asked Steven, "How uh, what are you going to use to get upstairs?" Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. What are the famous Aerosmith songs? Let's figure this out. What are the famous Aerosmith songs? Walk this way, Man, dude. Dude looks like a lady. Is that what it's called? Um, other side. What's that one song? I'm gonna let you off the hook. I mean, we, time's running out here. <laughs> no one wants to hear you talk through this. <laughs> I'm yeah, they do. It's a detective. It's detective work. It's like a uh, Aerosmith's definitely a band. They've got Dream On. They got Daughter oh. in Movie. Oh, that, what's that? My name's Getting song. Uh, oh, I don't want to close my eyes. <laughs> don't want to fall asleep i'd still piss oh piss are we talking about piss still no <laughs> elevator i'll still elevator. Oh, oh, uh, elevator Ele- love in an elevator yeah that's how they get upstairs when they uh, love in an elevator yeah you're very close in elevator ben levin ben levin because uh, you said it's me so my last name's Levin. oh ben levin and ben levin yeah oh levin in an ben elevator levin, uh, something like that levin and ele- levin levin and elevator or something like that yeah like ben Levin, an elevator. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would oh, never got, get that. Dude, though. we did it. We almost figured it out. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm glad I could get it. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool that we kind of figured it out, man. Yeah. Levin, an elevator. I got the acapella. You were. I'm on the dice. I'm tossing. I'm going to have a fantasy. Where am I going to look? He said all this to Ben. <laughs> Here it comes. Ben, do you want to have? Okay, let's wrap it up. Thank no, you. I thought ben. that was a good. That was a good note to yeah. end on. I mean, that was yeah. great. Great. I knew that was going to be a big. I knew that was going to be a closer because I thought love in an elevator. Oh, that sounds like eleven. Yeah. <laughs> Also, it was kind of cool that we figured it out, too, kind of. Yeah. I feel good about that. Like, I, I don't know that song, but I was glad I was able to remind you of it. Yeah, Let's somehow it was like, you know, we're thinking about what I was. I was like, OK, what are some songs? What are some Aerosmith songs? And then, you know, you, you knew the song and I was like, oh, yeah, Elevator. Yeah, 11, 11 and Elevator, something like that. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. That's cool. Great joke, Doug. Great sleuthing <laughs> Brent dude that was a team effort man we really yeah. made that happen that was cool man that was yeah. great that's a great thing to end on I yeah think. y'all Congrats, do guys. so much great work together i love you guys you're the best and aerosmith is you know boston zone so is ben levin yep so thanks ben for uh sticking around with us 
And um, we'll see you next week on the Poundcast. For yeah, thanks for, thanks for being on. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Thank you for being it's here. A, a no, real, the real, real, the real stuff goes down in the in the after dark. That's where the fun. Can is. I Hell can yeah. I ask one last thing before we go to Ben? Anytime. Can yeah. you just right now do for us as a closing thing, and we'll just end on this. Can you do yeah. the craziest tongue twister kind of situation that you can ever do that you've ever done for us right now, real quick? All right, let me think about it for a second. Like I could make one that's pretty hard, like a. Uh, just hardcore, just go balls out right now. All right. Was he supposed uh, to come up with that off the like? Off I'll do. No, I'll no, do like I, the I actually Indian rhythmic solfege that he already had. But hey, do whatever. Oh, okay. Well, I could do kita taka taka ti kita taka tani kita tani gina tum taki kita taka tani kita tani gina tum taki taka tani gina tum taka tani gina kita taka tani kita tani gina tum taki taka tani gina taka tani gina. That's a pretty like hard one that I practiced a lot back in the day. It's kita taka tani kita. Kita taka tari kita takita taringina tum taka dimi taka juno taringina tum takita, and it's a just a very long uh, bunch of accents, baby. It's fun. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Great episode. Yeah, and um, we'll see you on the internet soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Welcome to the Poundcast. Welcome to the Poundcast. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Poundcast. Welcome to the Poundcast.